Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you kind of a guide on how to do deep dives without any overclocks. Hopefully this is a little bit more in depth than some of the other ones that we've done. I have taken uh, no overclocks on deep dives quite a few times. This is going to be for the elite deep dive and hopefully this will be kind of explaining how to solo it or a potential build for it. So for this I'm going to be picking my gunner class. The reason why I'm picking gunners, gunners usually the slowest class to do things by themselves simply because your mobility tool is not really the fastest and you don't really have any way of like getting to the objective quickly like like a driller or engineer does or even scout you're kind of a slower class so this will be taking your time more but still playing to the strengths of gunner before we actually get to the deep dive i'm going to go over a build and why i'm running it kind of the things that i'm taking with it and the main idea behind each of these so first up with my primary weapon i'm going to be taking a lead storm powered minigun a very strong primary weapon does really high damage to single targets the way that i'm building this is with increased accuracy uh usually i go with more ammo but more damage here is good too whichever you'd like uh, blow through rounds, faster spin up, better cooling once you're killing stuff. Pretty simple minigun here. The more things you're killing, the more it's cooling down. You can punch through enemies to potentially hit more enemies, but you could also take something like armor breaking here. Nothing too crazy here on the minigun. For a secondary, I'm going to be taking the burst pistol, although any of the secondaries would work. Same with any of the primaries would work, and this should work for just about every class too. So for this... On the burst pistol, I'm running increased accuracy, faster reloads, more damage, more damage on weak spots, and the burst stuns so that we can potentially stun things. This is going to be for just run and gun ability. I'm going to be using the burst pistol to just run around, shoot stuff when I need to, or pick off stuff at long range. Otherwise, I'm going to be using the minigun for most other things. One thing that this particular build might struggle against is swarmers. You'll still be able to kill them fairly fast, but it is kind of a pain to target each one of them individually. So to make up for that, I'm going with the incinerary grenade. And with all three of these combined, we should have a loadout that kind of covers all of our uh, main issues that we're going to be having. That's kind of what I would recommend for you to think about when you're putting together a build to take this on an elite deep dive for the first time. Is just kind of set up a build that, one, you're comfortable with, whichever weapons you enjoy the most. I would say use those ones because they're going to be the easiest thing for you to actually use and the most likely for you to succeed but then after that just try to make up for the weaknesses so if you're very single target damage heavy or very long range heavy maybe consider trying to go for something that's a little bit more short range within your loadout in this case we're going to be using the fire grenades for crowd control for my pickaxe this is personal preference but i really like power attack and better weight balance lets me use my power attacks more often that's very useful and i would recommend using your power attack very often on really any mission it's a free uh one hit most of the time so that's great perks are also really important these are the perks that i'm running with this one you don't need to run these ones in particular but think about your perks before you go on a mission first up i'm running sweet tooth this is just to get more health more health is always good. We also get bonus movement speed, and we don't really need to, like, have Born Ready since we're not taking a weapon that reloads uh, slowly. Like, if I was taking the Auto Cannon and the Hurricane, I'd probably replace this with Born Ready. Thorns, this is just to keep little things off of us, like Swarmers. Yeah, I just really like it. It gets rid of Jellyfish, gets rid of Swarmers. Doesn't really bother us with any of the small stuff. Resupplier just makes it so you can get resupplies back faster, which is very important if there's a Swarm coming, as well as you just get extra health from it, so it's more sustained. And you also get the instant reload for all your weapons. Just a great quality of life perk overall. For active perks, I'm taking dash so that I can get out of bad situations. I would recommend dash on just about everybody besides scout. You don't really need it on them. You don't necessarily need it on the other classes, but it is essentially a get out of jail free card. So I would suggest trying it if you haven't tried it before. And the last perk is totally your choice. You can pick whatever you'd like, especially if you're playing solo. If you're playing multiplayer, I would recommend either Filled Medic or Iron Will, though, on Gunner here in particular. And Filled Medic and Iron Will in general in multiplayer. It really helps out. Both of them can get your team another chance at success, so especially in combination. It's also just really good to have Iron Will with something like Resupplier, so if you do go down next to a Resupply, you can hop back up, get it without any trouble, and then you're not stressing about getting health before you go down again or having to res before you go down again. The only other thing I'd really like to discuss here because the shield generator and zipline launcher build how you'd like. However you like using them, I'd recommend just keep using them like that. For shield generator, I just have longer duration of the shield and zipline launcher, I got just like disconnection protection and like a steeper angle. Pick whichever one you'd like though. One thing I would really recommend people trying out is taking breathing room. The rest of this, you can kind of go with whatever, like in tier one, pick whatever one of these you'd like. Tier two, I would recommend the health over the shield, just because if you get a uh, shield disruption, the extra shield isn't going to help you, and health is. Health also makes it so you might be able to sustain another hit before you would go down normally. Tier three, you obviously don't have any option. But then in tier four here, I would really recommend breathing room, 
This makes it so your time for invulnerability after being revived is doubled. So you go from having just three seconds of invulnerability up to six seconds, which that is a really big amount of health uh, that allows you to res somebody in that amount of time, allows you to get a full resupply in that amount of time. That kind of covers that. Let's go over Bosco really fast too. For Bosco, uh, this is the way I like running Bosco, but pick the way that you enjoy running Bosco. I have faster mining, rockets because it's our only option, an extra down, so we have three downs in total. You could go with four downs if you wanted to take this one though. Uh, the extra mining is pretty nice though for him just to get a quarks or get extra whatever it might be, extra nitra. Cryo missiles and then electric rounds. I usually forget to use the cryo missiles in general, but you probably shouldn't. And then always, always, always be sure to take whatever the daily beer is, unless it's like pots of gold here, because pots of gold will just get us money. Uh, but if it's anything else, if it's Slayer Stout, if it's uh, Rocky Mountain, whatever it might be, take this. Rocky Mountain, maybe not if you're in the Sand Blast, but that would be like the only exception. We're going to the radioactive uh, zone, so let's head in here and see what kind of mission we've got. It looks like we've got a Dreadnought mission, a mining mission, Cave Leech Cluster, and that should be about it. So watch the ceiling. If you know ahead of time how the deep dives are going to be progressing and what type of missions you're going on, you can also tailor your build to that. I have not. This is going in completely blind. But if you want another advantage going into any of these elite deep dives or just the regular deep dives, you can always check out things like the official Deep Rock um, Discord. There's almost always somebody that posts something there saying what the weekly rundown is. And it looks like we hit something? What did we hit? Oh, we hit a hoarder. Alright. Fantastic. One thing that you want to do right away in any of the deep dives is make sure that you're prioritizing Nitra. Be sure to get this as quickly as you possibly can, whether you're playing solo or you're playing in a team. Because this is very important. Unless you have like a really high ammo build, which we don't have a really high ammo build, it's decent, but... If you're running a real high ammo build, maybe you don't need to prioritize it right away, but it never hurts to go for extra nitra. Um, also, if you're playing solo like I am, and you're just sitting here depositing, you can always have Bosco be looking around, grabbing stuff for you, or just kind of preemptively getting stuff before you get over to it. So let's try to get as much of this Morkite as we can. And again, remember we have Cave Leech Cluster, so we are going to want to be very careful of the seedlings. For any small enemies like this, if you just see them wandering around, just try to hit them with your pickaxe. You don't need to be wasting ammo on it. If you have thorns, you potentially could just ignore them. And then... Oh, this is perfect. There we go. Yes, if you can, you can have Bosco freeze things like this. And if we had killed that a little bit quicker, that would have been kind of useful. Alright, pick off all this stuff. We're going to focus down the grunts first. Always focus down whatever is the immediate threat to you and just kind of ignore whatever else. I find that's just useful to, for me to do. Because if I'm so worried about other things that might be off in the distance, I usually lose track of the stuff that's very close by. So that kind of goes just about every game. At least for me. I don't know if it's for you too. If it is, then you're not alone. <laughs> if that makes you feel any better. Oh, I got a menace. Okay. We did stun the menace as he burrowed, so he may not bother us anymore. Oh, but we got grabbed by a leech. Huh, I didn't even see that leech. I did look up here. Thanks, Bosco. In a mission like this, you might want to have Bosco near you all the time. That does help. Oh, it was just hiding right there. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing up here. I was going up to nothing. All right, consult your map too. Don't be like me and just assume that you know where you're going. There's a good chance you don't. Okay. Both of the rounds getting us quite a lot of value there. Against depressors, try to hit them with your pickaxe as well, especially with the power tag, doesn't matter where. But they do take extra damage from melee. Again, saving a little bit of ammo 
And we're not really investing that much time to kill them either, at least if there's only one. If there's more than one, just kill it the fastest way that you can. Assuming that you think it's the biggest threat here. If not, ignore it. Just run away. <laughs> Alright, first dreadnought's over here. And we've nearly gotten all of the mining out of the way that we need to. Actually, we did get all the mining out of the way. You can also just pick X exploders too, if you're brave enough. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little bit scary doing that, but if you hit them in the head, they won't explode. Also, other weapons just make it a lot easier too. If you have like the cryo cannon or if you have the microwave gun, you'll get rid of them really quick that way too. And I'm kind of hoping that this is helping people in some way. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, you know, what level do they need to be to go on elite deep dives or what type of overclocks do they need to go on elite deep dives? And the truth is you don't really need a certain level. You don't really need certain overclocks either. Overclocks will generally make things easier for you because a lot of the time they are just an advantage. Okay, Bosco's got his rockets up. Rocket! This looks like a prime place for leeches though, so I'm gonna stay mostly back here. And just pick off the stuff that we can. In a mission like this too, it's probably best for you to not just rush ahead into a particular area. Make sure that you've cleared out the area first. Because if you clear out an area and then enemies start spawning in front of you, or even if enemies start spawning behind you, you know at least over here is fairly safe. And so long as you can get over to there, you have at least one path of retreat where you know you're not just going to get ganked by leeches or anything. Okay, let's get rid of the breeders really quick. Get rid of any other potential threats. I'm not seeing any leeches down there, so we're gonna take our zip line here. Just to be a little bit careful, go kinda slow there. Alright, we'll get this as Bosco's killing that. Alright, once again, back to killing the immediate threat, or what will be the threat later on. Get rid of that. Push another zip line, and we'll just be kind of wary of the ceiling. Just sort of look for them. I might be able to see these a little bit easier than you guys do. The encoder on YouTube, even though I have the better encoder, is still, like, eh. Not the best when it comes to keeping track of stuff like that. Alright, let's get the dreadnought started. Of course, make sure everybody's ready when you're going to do this if you're doing this in multiplayer. If not, make sure you're ready. And for the twins, we're just going to keep on attacking them pretty much normally, looking out for any explosives that are nearby, trying not to get rushed down, and making sure we can dodge stuff like this. Also, be sure to throw in your power attacks there too. They do a lot of damage, even to the dreadnoughts. I know it can be a little bit scary at times because <laughs> they might be doing stuff like that. Once you get the attack patterns down, it's not the worst thing though. Man, I was hoping I could jump over that. And while we have dreadnoughts here, there really shouldn't be a whole lot of um, potential bugs coming. Oh. Technically, we don't have enough for a resupply. Now we do. So, you also always want to fight in an adv advantageous location. Like this place right here is very useful for us. Because so we can mostly just kind of stay away from the dreadnoughts. dash to get a little bit of distance. And I'm betting they're gonna go heal. Nope. Alright. Scenario grenades don't really do much to dreadnoughts, but... Oh! We found another leech. Dang. I should've been looking for that. Well. Bosco's not gonna be able to save us in time. That's one of our downs. Don't worry about going down too much, though. Um, it doesn't honestly 
matter as much as you might think. Especially since we're in solo, so we get more HP once we get back up. And you do get all of your downs back for each level. So even if you get down three times in the first stage, it doesn't really matter. You'll get three more downs in the second stage, and so on with the third stage. Another thing that you may want to consider doing, if you're not interested in getting uh, the cosmetic overclock per week, because every week you get a blank, you get a weapon, and you get a cosmetic overclock, is don't even worry about stage three, only worry about the first two stages. Just try to complete them. Yes, you will get a little bit more um, overclocks if you keep going for the cosmetic one, because obviously you're getting one of the cosmetics knocked off the list. And for every five overclocks you make, then you get, you know, another one. But that's not a huge deal. Most people honestly don't care too much about the cosmetic overclocks right away. I certainly didn't when I was still getting weapon overclocks. I wanted them more than anything else. So just kind of focus on, like, whatever the heck you're really wanting. Huh. It's kind of weird. Okay. Use this to clear up these grunts. I don't know where they came from. Put this down. Be safe here because there's a bit too much stuff. Once we're in the shield, though, we're very safe, so. Alright. Try to get some distance. I don't want to eat another fireball to the face. Okay. Make sure you take out things like acid spitters first, too. Unfortunately, this one showed up late, but... Acid spitters, web spitters, tri jaws should be like your main priority slashers as well because all of them can deal a lot of damage. We might just want to reuse this room for the next Dreadnought too. Huh, there's another breeder in here. And I want to get rid of that before we start the Dreadnought. Because if we can get rid of that, then we don't have to worry about the jellyfish actually showing up. There we go. I knew there'd be more leeches in here. That certainly helped us, though. Okay. I think all the leeches are taken Bosco, care of. Bosco can get that. We'll pop this Dreadnought Egg. And right here is really not a great place to be fighting. It's way too cramped. Uh, there's just not enough room to move around here. Any of the Dreadnoughts can force us into a corner and just kind of beat us up, so... Kind of look around whenever you're picking a place to fight and just sort of ask yourself, is this a great place to fight? Can I rotate around it? Can I move around? Or am I just kind of stuck here? If the answer is I'm just kind of stuck here, you may want to consider moving, unless it's just like a really good position, like you're up a very steep hill or something. Or I guess a very inclined hill where you can just fire right down it. So let's get the Dreadnought going and see what it is. All right, it's a Hive Guard. We definitely don't want to fight a Hive Guard there. There is a bit too much stuff there. So we're going to retreat back to the other room. Once again, be sure you're using your power attack. Power attacks work really well against basically everything. And again, it's a free, usually one hit or at least a free stun on just about anything. Hive Guard's usually pretty easy to deal with. Just keep on moving around. Again, power attacks are your best friend. Try to get yourself into a good position to be attacking his back. Just try to deal as much damage as you can. Avoid his little pine cones he throws out. I think twins are a little bit more straightforward because it's just shoot them as much as possible and then try to avoid everything else that they're doing. You can also largely just ignore the uh, hive guard. He doesn't move super quick outside of his enraged phase, which you're going to be focusing on him then anyway. So just if you hear him spitting, you know, maybe try to pay attention to that. Or if you're solo, you know he's going to be targeting you. Okay. There we 
go. Yep, whoops. Now then I'll... Alright. It's okay, though. Second stage out of the way. We didn't really waste any bullets there. Um, although we are running kind of low on ammunition, so this might be a good time to actually go for our resupply pod. Yeah, so maybe we don't just get cut off by sentinels, I guess. Another added advantage if you have dash is anytime you get stuck like this, you can usually use it to just get out of whatever bad situation you're in. Oh yeah, um, like I said, with the downs, you get all your downs back uh, once you go to the next stage. That doesn't only apply to downs, that also applies to any perks that have multiple charges. So if you have Iron Will and you use up Iron Will, uh, you'll get it back again on the next stage. Same with the stage after that. And it works the same way with uh, like See You in Hell, it works the same way with um, Heightened Senses, I'm trying to think if it works on any others. Is there any others that have charges? If there is, it works on them too. Okay. Alright. Drew it down, down, deposit what we got. Then as soon as you're ready, hit the drop pod button. No reason to stand around or wait, otherwise you're just gonna be ended. You're just gonna be using up more resources. And grab that, and we're on our way out. Let's follow Molly, see where she's going. There's not really much to worry about on this one unless the drop pod comes in at a weird angle <laughs> like it did. In which case, it looks like we're going to be mining our way through it. And again, be sure to be using your pickaxe attack. It does help with mining too. Even if you're just mining materials, it helps you mine like coal much faster. If you're gonna, you get the added advantage of having your shield, so you get to do some pretty safe mining too. <laughs> okay, let's go. On to the next stage. All right, our next stage is protect the drill dozer, repair mini mules, critical weakness, and exploder infestation. Okay, so we'll be doing a lot of damage here. This will be good for us. Um, we can kill the bugs very fast. Exploders do pose a threat to Dottie, so we will want to be on the lookout for them. But also keep in mind, if you have salvage mini mules, then you're going to be getting more nitro and more gold from it, because every mini mule you get has between 40 and 60 nitro, I believe, inside of it, and gold. So with just repairing those two, we're guaranteed to get a resupply. So since we already have um, enough for two resupplies, we should not prioritize them first. We should really prioritize Dottie, unless, of course, one spawns in this room with us when we're just starting where Dottie can't be injured. After that, though, I would recommend not going for him and instead just sticking with Dottie the entire time and just trying to get that done as quickly as possible because, obviously, if we lose Dottie, um, we lose the mission. I mean, we even got more Nitro here, so we're still going pretty good. But it does not look like we have any mules here. So, let's hop down to Dottie, get her all ready to go, and get heading out as quickly as we can. Um, yeah, let's get started. I hear them spawning, so. Oh, that's right. These aren't actually as bad in this file. They don't do as much explosive damage, I don't believe you. The lingering radiation damage might hurt Dottie a bit, but that's okay, we can fix her up. Don't worry, Dottie. We got gotcha. you. Alright, now, on this mission in particular, Gunner is extremely strong. Gunner on escort missions is just strong in general. It's one of your biggest strengths is just being able to murder lots and lots of bugs. And whenever you hit an area like this that's going to the next place, be sure to look ahead a little bit, if you can because there's likely more enemies in here. Especially if there's things like spitballers, it can be annoying, or if there's things like tri-jaws. Take them out first. 
is going to be pretty much just the mini gun to pick off everything. I don't care, but that's okay. Daddy's still mostly fine. Repair when you can, but um, try to be killing stuff as much as possible. Oh yeah, critical weakness. That's right. That makes this much easier. Because we'll even be able to kill big things like this warden fairly quick. First things first, whenever this stops, be sure to kill off any immediate threats. Uh, that's right, we're not grounded. And kind of scout ahead. Of course, repair Dottie if Dottie's low. Otherwise, scout ahead, clear out threats, then go and get the oil as fast as you can. If you're in multiplayer, somebody could probably go for the mini mules here. If you have like a scout, have them do it. Well, other classes like driller and engineer kind of get oil. Or gunner get oil. Whoever it might be that's getting oil. Whatever your team comp is. It's just you don't need everybody scouting out at once. Alright, we can get a Steve, so... Make sure to actually use your perks, too. That's kind of important. Alright. We're gonna fix up Dottie here real quick. Damage! Oil. Oil on the ground you can pick up faster than oil on the walls. So if you are playing somebody like Driller, you can just blow it up with something like C4. Uh, you can also use your EPC to mine it, assuming you have it set up for that. Or uh, you could even potentially use like nukes with Engineer to do it. I wouldn't really recommend that because your nukes are valuable. More valuable than oil is probably. But it is something that you can do. Make sure to clear up these crystals too if they're an issue. Just aim for the brightest part of them. That's just kind of a general tip if you're in this biome. If you aim for the brightest part of them, just hit them with your pickaxe. You'll kill them. Uh, same goes with you have like drills. Or you can shoot them. Okay. Careful of whatever threads are coming your way too. Or know what it might be. Alright, the drill dozer's under attack, but we have this under control. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, you have two options here. You can either go ahead and go forward, or you can stand and fight stuff. I would say stand and fight stuff's usually a better option. It does kind of depend. But since we... Oh, sorry, Steve. Since we do have, like, critical weakness, we should be able to clear up all this stuff pretty quick. Sorry, against Steve. You're as good as new, Doretta. All right, we'll put this away, I and we'll get going with Dottie. Was meant for hauling what I mine. We still have enough ammo. We'll be fine to get to the uh, Operin. I think that every time you have a deep dive, or at least an elite deep dive that has escort missions, you're only guaranteed two stops. Well, I guess one stop. One stop, and then the actual, like, armor and stop. Okay. Use this to kind of pick stuff off. Steve, you good? And we'll leave the mini meals here. We don't really care about them that much. If we were more hurting for Nitra, it might be better to prioritize them so you can get a resupply and get going. If not, though, and you're doing fine like us, then that's less necessary. There's the other deal. Oh. Okay, use my power attack. Try to aim for the head for critical weakness. That's just handy. We also fell off the drill dozer, so maybe beneficial for us to get back to that. There's one there. 
I thought I'd see one moving inside, but I wasn't sure. Okay. Here, Warden. Take care of whatever immediate threats we've got. Get rid of all this. Okay. We're gonna call in our resupply here. We should only need one for this. Uh, if you're playing in multiplayer, you probably want two. I usually put them on either side of the drill dozer, that way people can get to them a little bit easier. Oh. Ah, didn't get a single shot there. There we go. Alright, we're just gonna start this up. I'm gonna grab the resupply. Again, we're gonna want to do this fairly quick because exploder infestation on drill dozer missions. Not always the most fun. We should only need one resupply at the moment. We don't need our second one just yet. We'll probably get that more towards the end. If you're playing Gunner, using a trick like this really helps. Put your shield around Dottie, and it's going to be much harder for them to actually hit her. So you essentially just get a bunch of free repairs in. And this can work in multiplayer too. It's even better if you have multiple Gunners. You don't need to throw it in the center like I did. You can throw it to one side or the other, wherever there's more bugs. Alright. Off with flying rocks because they're kind of the biggest threat at the moment. Now, now maybe. Okay, get rid of this. It looks like we're gonna lose part of Dottie. That's okay though. We still have two parts of her. Since we're doing solo too, there's not as many flying rocks around, which is very handy. So, well, before we do this, let's get some more value out of it. Use up our grenades. Build this back up. Alright, we're through the rocks, that's usually the most difficult phase. So we're just going to try to repair this as much as we can. Pick off what we can. I think Steve died a little while ago, so we should probably prioritize getting a Steve too. Probably got blown up at some point. Just my guess. Again, prioritize Dottie. Pretty much as so long as you have two parts of Dottie still alive by By the last stage, you're usually pretty much set. Unless you get an unfortunate detonator or something, but that usually doesn't happen. Okay. Try to repair Dottie. Oh. Unfortunate. <laughs> Should have thrown that down a little bit sooner. Alright, well. We're gonna hold out hope as long as possible, of course. Oh, yeah. Steve, fight for us. Get rid of those bugs. Now, for these ones, you can just shoot them. At least if you have a gun that can kill them. If not, then uh, you might have to run up and mine them. If you're playing Driller, you can. A lot of times in solo, though, I don't even bother with them. I usually just sit here on the stage and repair. And then just kind of... If I have any AoE like that, I'll throw it down. That usually makes up for the uh, 
the amount of damage that's actually being done. And the more laser stacking on Dottie doesn't do that much more damage. So... A lot of the time you don't have to worry about it too much. Again, playing Gunner. Shield makes this a little bit easier too. Now, of course, fire makes everything a little bit better. So, we use up our grenades here. We'll clear off those sides. Pick off anything that we can. Heightened senses is proven, or not heightened senses, uh, critical weakness is proven to be pretty useful for us. Like we're pretty good. Nice. Alright. Looks like we're ready to go. Come here, Dottie. Gotcha. <laughs> Alright, Molly, come over here. Let's also get our resupplies here. We might as well grab them both. I don't plan on coming back here. Unless, of course, the drop bot is here. Got the mules put together. I skipped that, obviously, during the editing phase because uh, picking up legs and putting them on bots is not the most eventful thing in this game. Uh, I'm sure some would argue that, but for time reasons, we'll cut that. We're gonna take Dottie back. You don't have to take Dottie back. Some people have asked me if you get anything from it. You don't. You just get a cool little cutscene. Uh, and if it's on the last mission, then she does come back with you to the space rig. Which is kind of cool. Obviously not necessary, but something. Another very odd placement for a drop pod location. Aw. Dang it. I'm going to die trying to save Dottie. <laughs> We're going to have a talk with management once we come back from this mission, aren't we, Dottie? Stop putting the rockets into the walls before we have to dig through. We're not playing driller. <laughs> Alright, well, we used up our three downs there to save Dottie, but I think it was totally worth it. On to stage three. And see what stage three has in store for us. Mactera Plague, Alien Eggs, and Mini Meals. Okay, again, we have Mini Meals, so we know that we're going to get enough for a resupply. So we shouldn't have to worry about that too much. And we have four eggs as the primary. If you have four eggs, that means you're going to get one swarm. Not the worst. Mactera Plague can be annoying, but not the worst thing in the world. And again, if you've been playing uh, just to get the weapon overclocks, it doesn't really matter like how well you do on this one, right? Okay. They have full confidence in our abilities. I have very little confidence in their abilities, though. Alright, right. Copy my Terra. Grab that Bosco. Huh, we did kind of run low on bullets there. Probably just from fighting all that stuff at the very end on the last stage. Right, again, let's go back to the room that we know. We know that there isn't anything spawning in here, so. We should be all good to fight in here. I put that one there to potentially knock that crystal out. I, I don't think that was necessary, but. <laughs> Was kind of cool. Alright, Bosco, could you set that down? You can have Bosco drop stuff or toss stuff to you as well. At least if you're on, uh, Mouse and keyboard push X. There is a way to do it on controller too, but I don't remember exactly what that is. 
again. We're just gonna rotate around this room as much as we can. Trying to deal with big threats first. Try jaws in this case are probably the biggest threat. Although we do have quite a few guards and stuff. So more Molotovs. Steve's not gonna give us a whole bunch of value here. Okay, okay, keep on moving. We don't have any shields, which is unfortunate. But our dash should be up relatively soon. Okay. I'm gonna try to get everything over here really quick. And then just hopefully, oh, didn't quite dash in time. <laughs> Radiation lingered a bit further than I thought it would be. All right, well, even so, since we do have resupplier, this is pretty easy. <laughs> we have resupplier and we have breathing room. That gave us six seconds to grab the resupply and do that, which cleared up a lot. If we hadn't used up our shield, we could have used our shield there too and got another resupply slash potentially just killed everything. Okay. Let's grab these other two because we might as well. We're not hurting for nitro at all. So we can call in another one in here. And these other three eggs cannot trigger a swarm like those ones did. It'll trigger a smaller swarm, but not like the full on. There's a swarm coming for you, lads. Or whatever the guy over the radio says. I don't know, looks like this room will be good to fight in. We're gonna ignore most of that nitro, we don't really need it. Look out for leeches, of course. <laughs> Give heightened senses. That'll kind of trigger for you. I don't think we need that since all three legs are right over here. Ow. Was that Busco or was it the Goo Bomber that actually saved me there? <laughs> Relatively safe place so we can pick off the problem things here. Okay. Yeah, quite a few bombers today. Yeah. Didn't notice you. All right, that's another egg down for us. Bosco, would you mind getting that egg? I'll get more of these legs over here. We just need one more leg. Actually, I should probably put this leg on this one. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just gonna have to go further for it. Jazz first, again they're the biggest threat. Thank you, Bosco. <laughs> you can uh, you can drop that. Okay, and then the last one is over here somewhere. Well have Bosco grab that while we are searching for legs. Oh well, okay. We found a leg. Not what we were trying to look for, but it's here. Shield can be very useful if something like this happens to you, where you just have a bunch of bugs show up. Gonna pick up all these. Okay. And, oh. Go fetch. Go grab that one, Bosco, please. Thank you. We can also call it a resupply here. No reason not to. We have so much nitra. Yeah, we still got an extra 200. And we're gonna get another 40 to 60 right here. Resupply arrived. Go restock. You sure?
sure to use up like all your nitro if you need to. Either on stage two or stage three, again, depending on if you just want to get through. The first couple stages don't really care about the cosmetic overclock. If you do, then maybe try to save up a bit so that you still can get to stage three. But don't be so, um, so stingy with all of your stuff that you just end up dying, like in stage one or two, because you refuse to call in a resupply. I feel like you should try to get the uh, main objective done first at really any cost and then see how it goes from there. Maybe not if you're, um, if you've already tried the elite deep dive like a couple of times and you're just struggling with it, then it might not be best to do that. I should get another resupply. I am running low on bullets after all. <laughs> should go back fully stocked for the next mission. All right, away we go. That one wasn't too bad. This was probably one of the easier deep, uh, leap deep dives that we've done in a while. Uh, that stage two is kind of rough, uh, mostly because Exploder Infestation on an escort mission is always going to be kind of uh, rough in general. Let's see how many bugs we smushed. 432, not very many, although one of those was an elimination mission, so kind of makes sense. On average, at least for me, to complete the deep dives if I'm not trying to speedrun them or anything, the elite ones usually take me anywhere from 50 minutes to about an hour and a half-ish. Uh, an hour and a half on the very long side. Usually it's closer to an hour, so, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. If I'm trying to speedrun it a little bit quicker, maybe 30 minutes. I'm not the best at speedrunning, though, either, so might want to ask some other people that are better at this. But this was Gunner with no overclocks. You don't need them to do elite deep dives. Uh, you also don't need to be a particular level to do elite deep dives either. Um, just whenever you feel comfortable and you feel like you want to get those extra rewards, I would suggest trying them out. I would always suggest trying out the elite deep dive like every week because at the very least, I think most people are going to be able to complete the first stage. And if you just complete the first stage, you still get a blank, which is just as good as a weapon overclock. Definitely try them out. See what you can do. Definitely play the regular deep dives too. And if you're getting more comfortable moving up in hazard difficulties, if you're really comfortable with like hazard four, I would say try out the elite deep dives. They are a little bit harder than that. Um, they do go into hazard five or five and a half, but uh, I think that at least the first and usually the second stage is doable by most people, especially if you just want to only do those two and really focus on just doing the second stage at any cost. Sometimes the second stage could be rough like this one, but I think most people will be able to do this. Hopefully this kind of helped you out. Uh, hopefully this was a somewhat informative guide. I can do this with the other classes too if you guys would like. It was a lot of fun to make. Thanks everybody for watching this. Special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube, patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos just like this, so if you'd like to be a part of that, you can. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye!